guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Dana, thanks again for watching. If you're new here, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. Today, we're gonna get into a brand that I got influenced on Instagram to buy. And I feel like this brand does a really, really good job of doing that. So you may have either been influenced or are being influenced right now. So I thought that I would test these products out and give you my thoughts on them, show you how they look on skin, kind of give you, you know, maybe the best skin type for them because I'm pretty sure there's a certain skin type made, or not made for these, but these are made for. <laughs> We're just gonna get into it because I feel like it's a very, at least niche viral product or brand. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna take my glasses off. You guys, I mentioned this in one of my other videos. I can't see right now because I am not allowed to wear contacts until like a week and a half from now because I'm having LASIK surgery, which is very exciting and I am willing to not wear contacts for two weeks if I can see for the rest of my life. But it makes filming kind of hard because I can't really see that well. <laughs> Okay, enough about that. We're gonna get into the review. If you could not tell from the title and the thumbnail, we're talking about Iris and Romeo. This is a brand that I have seen for years now and I just finally got around to testing. I bought two of their products. I bought the Weekend Skin, which is an SPF, and then the Best Skin Days, which is supposed to be a five-in-one skincare, but basically like a skin tint foundation dewy coverage. It also has SPF 30 though. So I think that both of these are gonna kind of play off of each other and they you know i'm testing them both so it's not a dedicated just sunscreen review but y'all know that i love skin tints so it works i think all right so my face is dry and bare there's nothing on it no skincare no spf i always do this when i'm testing out a product it doesn't mean that you have to wear it on a bare face it just gives me kind of the baseline you know i want to always test everything in the same way and this is how i do it a bit about my skin if you've not watched the video from me before i have pretty normal combo skin it gets more combo to oily in the summertime and in my t-zone the rest of the time it's pretty normal i used to have dry skin so i can kind of see all the sides of things because i understand dry skin where you just want more and more moisture and hydration but i also have more normal to combo to oily skin so i get that side of it so I feel like I have a pretty representative perspective on things. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to zoom on in. We're going to start with our weekend skin because this is just the like regular SPF and apply it to my face. Now, typically I will apply it using the quarter of a teaspoon. And if I'm just doing just a sunscreen, that's what I always do. But because I am going to be applying this and then I'm going to be applying the Best Skin Days, which also has SPF 30, I'm not going to use as much because I think since these products are made by the same brand, they're both mineral filter sunscreens, you don't necessarily have to apply the exact amount since you're basically covering it with something very similar. So that's what I'm going to do today. And I think just from my experience with these, that's how it's going to work best. This packaging gets very, very dirty, very, very quickly. Okay, so Iris and Romeo's Weekend Skin SPF 50 plus vitamin C plus glow. It comes in 1.18 fluid ounces or 35 grams or milliliters. So a little bit or quite a bit less than your typical 1.7 ounces. And it does retail for $50, which is a lot. So you're basically a little bit over an ounce for $50. Very, very pricey in my mind. They are a smaller brand though, so it kind of makes a little sense to me. Later in the video, I said that it's 100% mineral and there is actually like a little bit of a caveat to that. This one also has beta-lactyl salicylate. You've heard me talk about that more recently. It's not considered an active ingredient by the FDA, but some people do consider it an active enhancer. So it can act like a chemical active ingredient in the sunscreen. So it just depends if you have some type of allergy to it, you react poorly to it, or you just don't like the fact that they are putting it in there, then consider this a hybrid. If this doesn't mean much to you or if it doesn't bother you, just go ahead and use it as a mineral sunscreen. As far as what they say, they say that it adds a sheer glow, never glittery, which is true and I like, that mimics a fresh from the facialist glow. <laughs> Layers beautifully under best skin days when you want coverage. So that is definitely true. And I think these two work really well in conjuncture. As far as ingredients, this one also has a vitamin C, which is, they say, stabilized and time release. Vitamin C in um, sunscreens, it doesn't necessarily bother me. Sometimes if they put too high of a percentage, it can kind of irritate my eyes. And if you are 
maybe a little bit more reactive to vitamin C. You don't want it in your sunscreen, but this one definitely has it. They also put niacinamide in here, which is not surprising because pretty much everyone puts niacinamide in everything these days. And then you also have some other extracts and lots of functional ingredients, which make this a pretty nice product. All right, I'm gonna let it sit for about five minutes. I'm gonna go wash my hands because they are dirty and I'll be back in a little bit. All right guys, so let's talk about what it looks like so far and what it feels like on my face. So for somebody with my normal skin and kind of like, a, it's actually kind of a humid day out. It's not super hot yet, but it's um, been raining a lot, so it's more humid. I can definitely feel that there is like more of an emollients to it. It doesn't feel like it's matte or anything close to like a natural finish. Um, so if I touch my face, I can feel like a little bit of tack to it and hairs will stick to it. I'll have like a little bit of um, residue on my fingers, but it doesn't feel overly heavy at all. That's the one thing about this sunscreen that kind of surprised me because it does have like a pretty rich and thick consistency. You saw when I squeezed it out. I'm not going to squeeze it out now because it kind of does make a mess. <laughs> not in a bad way. It's just that it's tinted and that is obviously to kind of make sure that there's no white cast, but it does have a lot of, not a lot, but it's got some pigment to it. I find that it makes my skin look nice and tanned and kind of bronze. But I think if you have pretty fair skin, it might make you look a little bit too bronze and tan. Like for me right now, I've got quite a bit of color already in the year, just because I've been in some warm weather places. So it actually makes my face match my body really well, but I can see it being a little too tan at times of the year or for different skin tones. Um, but I do like that it is like, there's no cast at all with this. There's also no scent to it. Um, and it's 100% mineral, and I have not found that I have any icing, which is pretty typical for a mineral sunscreen. So this one, I would say, is definitely more kind of made for your dry skin people, which is honestly, <laughs> feels like all sunscreens these days, which is funny because had these been around when my skin was drier, I would have like just jumped at the chance to use them and apply them. And it's not that I don't wanna apply them because I do like this look. I feel like it just looks very glowy and very radiant and healthy. But sometimes it's a bit much and like especially for me who's someone who's very active and lives in a warm climate i can just sweat this off and it'll get on my clothes and it's a little too much at certain times so this is very targeted to a subsect of people people who have dry skin who are not necessarily like out and about moving around i mean i would say like most mineral tinted sunscreens are more like almost like a makeup product but this is definitely for those types of people if you are active and sweating and outside and maybe have more oily skin, you would tend to go for something more natural or a matte finish that has a long wear. This one is not does not say that it's water or sweat resistant, so it will just kind of come off your face if you do sweat. Okay, next up we're going to go in with the best skin days. So I, it comes in a jar, whoa, and I'm going to apply it like I do most of my products these days. I've kind of switched from using my hands to using a brush or a sponge but you can do whatever you want. So how I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna apply half of it with a brush and then half of it with my fingers. I think if you use a sponge for this one, it's gonna soak up a lot of product, but you know, that is something you can consider. So this is the Best Skin Days SPF 30. It retails for $48 and you get even like a little bit more, it's 1.2 ounces, but they also say 35 milliliters. So it's a few dollars less, but about comparable amounts of product. This one comes in 12 shades. I wouldn't say the shade range is the best. It definitely veers more towards the light and medium shades, but they do have some deeper shades. So at least they didn't completely <laughs> leave out a whole population. This one they say though is a five in one makeup, skincare, SPF, all in one that gives natural coverage, a glowy hydrated finish and protected from UVA, UVB and, and blue light. This one has 21% zinc oxide. I forgot to mention in the last um, portion, but the Weekend Skin only has 10% zinc oxide. So you're actually getting pretty decent protection. And this is SPF 30, while the Weekend Skin is SPF 50. Now you can't necessarily go just off of the actual active ingredient percentage, but I was kind of shocked to see the higher percentage in the lower SPF. This one is what you would consider to be like a natural or like clean skincare product. If you look at the ingredient list, there's so many oils, there are so many butters. Well, maybe not necessarily butters, but it's got a very clean list. 
It's also very, very much meant for people with dry skin. This is not the type of product that I typically wear these days just because you either have to powder because you look greasy if you have more normal or oily skin, or even if you don't powder and you do have dry skin, it just kind of moves around on your face. Like anything that touches my face at this moment, it will come off. If I put glasses on, if I put sunglasses on, I will have like little dots where the product has been removed. If that's a problem for you, it's just probably not for you. But if that sounds perfect, then you know, it's one of those products that maybe is perfect for you. It does say, I have seen reports that this is buildable, but I've also seen that it's sheer coverage. I would go more toward the sheer coverage. I actually felt like I had better coverage with the sunscreen than with the best skin days. So I think if you're looking for something that gives you a little bit more of coverage and maybe like to cancel out some redness or whatever it is, the, the weekend skin is probably a better option. I don't know if I could necessarily build this. And I say that not because I don't think the pigment will build, but I think it will build. It will just kind of move around and not stay in place unless you powder it which seems a little like counter to what you, the look that you get from it. I think it looks absolutely beautiful. I think both of these are just stunning products. It's a kind of niche brand, so prices might be higher just because they're not like in big box stores. So if these are something that you're interested in, they're absolutely stunning and I don't see a lot of things bad about them besides the price and maybe the shade range. But I think if you are more into makeup, you might want something that's a little bit more sophisticated. These to me feel like they are pigment inside of skincare, which is great, but it doesn't last on your face and it doesn't necessarily give you that kind of polished look, which I prefer a little bit these days. But if you want this healthy radiant glow and you prefer very natural ingredients, these are great for you. That said, there are a million brands out there that kind of do the same thing. So when I tried these and when I've been using them, I've never disliked how they looked on my face. I never disliked anything about them particularly. I just didn't find them remarkable. I do actually dislike the fact that this comes in a jar. It's not my favorite delivery method. I do have the Chanel Sublimage, which also comes in a jar, and I prefer that, but I wish it didn't come in a jar because I just find it to be, I don't know, like a little too messy for me. So do you need to spend $100 to get both of these to have this kind of look? Absolutely, absolutely not. You can probably get this kind of look by buying any tinted sunscreen at this point. And I have plenty of videos on tinted mineral sunscreens at that. And I think they're gonna do just as good of a job. This one does have a really nice kind of different glow than a lot of others. But I think if you pick up the Say, what is it, Sun Visor sunscreen, you're gonna get exactly this look for just the price of that one. And I just prefer that overall, so. I think there's nothing wrong with them. I'm not gonna like bash this brand by any means, but I think in the world of sunscreen and makeup these days, you know, they're kind of one amongst a million. And I definitely don't see myself reaching for this. This is just not the type of product that I'm after these days, but I could see myself using this more in the winter time. For dry skin people, you could use it year round. For combo normal oily skin people, I would say in the cooler kind of like drier months, this might be better for you. Whew, I feel like I had a lot to say, not negative, but just kind of trying to cover all my bases. So if you did enjoy this video, give it a big old thumbs up and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.